and thank you so much for joining me today for this thought from the Bible. It's so great to be able to explore God's Word together with you today. Today I wanted to talk about fear. Now it's easy in this world that we're living in right now, a world of global pandemics and wars where you look at the news headlines and it seems like nothing but despair and problems and words like nuclear weapons being thrown out there. It's very easy to feel fear. Knowing that right now, right at this moment in this world, there are people who are facing horrendous situations, who are forced to flee from their homes, not knowing if they will see their homes, their loved ones ever again. These kind of situations are happening all around the world. There is suffering, there is pain, there is so very much to be afraid of. And sometimes it is hard not to feel just a little bit overwhelmed by it all. Not to mention the not at all insignificant everyday fears that we face in our own lives. Those kind of questions that creep up so often. What, what will the future bring? How am I going to provide for my family when I don't have any money? When I don't know what job I'm going to be doing in the next weeks or months or years? What should I be doing with my life? What do I do about this giant spider that's crawling toward me on the floor? A very real possibility here in Liberia, I can tell you. All of those things are very real fears that can creep into our lives that can be things that we experience every single day. And no matter how big or how small those things may seem, they are still significant fears in your own life. And they are things that need to be addressed. So last week, we talked about this point in the history of the Israelites where they had, had found themselves on the border of this promised land, the land that God had promised to them that they would take, that they would occupy, that would be theirs. And so they sent this group of 12 scouts in to have a look around and 10 of them returned saying, nope, no way. The people who live there are powerful, the cities are fortified and they are very large. Now, Honestly, those are some quite reasonable arguments. The people there were powerful. They, there were cities with massive walls. They were fortified. It seemed like a hard task. And at first, you know, they recognized that. But their arguments start to get a little bit more ridiculous the more they dwell on their fear. Until we read this in Numbers chapter 13, verses 32 to 33, those 10 scouts spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. Suddenly not such a, a good land anymore, as they'd reported at first. All of the people, not just some, all of the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. Fear has this horrible habit of distorting truth. It goes from well, this is, this is too hard for us to, this land devours any person who so much as sets foot in it. We're only grasshoppers. What can we do? The more that you dwell on the thing that you fear, that situation, that problem, the bigger it will grow. It will distort your 
thinking until it's all that you can think about, until those logical arguments are gone and replaced with the fantastic that is not even true, but it's all that you can think about and you can't see a way through what you're facing anymore. As I read through this story this time, it made me wonder, were Joshua and Caleb the other two scouts? Were they some kind of like superhuman Israelites? Did they not feel any fear at all? Honestly, I doubt it. I think that they would have felt the very same apprehension as those other 10 scouts. I'm sure that they would have entered the land and looked at these walled, fortified cities and the battles that they knew would have to come and felt quite nervous about it. See, it is okay to feel fear. It is something that all of us face, but we can choose whether or not we dwell on that thing that we fear until it becomes an absolutely insurmountable obstacle, just as it did for those 10 scouts. Or we can respond like Joshua and Caleb did in Numbers chapter 14, verses seven to nine. Just listen to the different tone that this report takes. Joshua and Caleb said, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Now it's very easy to say, just, oh, just don't be afraid, right? That's very easy to say. But the key here is where they were looking. The land won't devour us, they said. We will devour them. And only because the Lord is with us. We have no need to be afraid anymore because God is on our side, because he is going to walk into that land with us. We're not going on our own. We don't need to fear because we're not the ones who are gonna be fighting these battles. There's a lovely verse in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, that says, there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear. In other translations, it says that perfect love casts out fear. It expels fear. Fear can't exist in the presence of that perfect love. God's incredible love for us is what we need to take fear and kick it out of the door. And yes, you know what? Fear will still crop up. No matter how good you are at doing this, there will still be times in your life when you feel fear, when you feel worry, when you feel anxiety. And that fear will tempt you to make it bigger than it is. But the more you look to God, the more you look to his perfect love, to the Lord who is with us, the less you will need to fear anything else. And as much as I would love it, you know, if there was a little button in your brain that was like a fear on off switch, unfortunately that's not really the case. Chances are this will be a process for you. But day by day, little by little, the more that you change the focus of your thoughts, the easier you will find it to cast out 
any fear. In fact, it can even become a prompt to enter in the presence of God. When you start to feel that little bit of anxiety creep into your head, when you feel those butterflies in your stomach, that worry starts to get bigger in your mind. Take that as a reminder, as a prompt to look to God, to remind yourself of who he is, of that perfect love that he has shown for you that casts out all fear. No matter what happens in this crazy world that we're living in, no matter what happens in your own life, the Lord is with you. You do not need to be afraid because there is nothing that can defeat him. Thank you so much for joining me today for that thought from the Bible. I hope that that encourages you. I hope that you can remember that when those, those little fears start to creep into your mind. I'll be back on Wednesday with another thought from the Bible, another video, so I will see you then.